Hello and welcome to Intro to C. I'm Bill, and today's episode is section one of chapter one, the basics. So today we're going to create our very first program, usually called Hello World. So if you haven't watched any of the previous episodes, please do so in the introduction chapter, chapter zero. This will tell you how to set up your project, why you want to program C, how programs work, and how you can compile your program. So please do that first if you haven't done so, and carry on. Okay, good. So today we've got a program within our Visual Studio project, which we can now compile the program with and edit and all that such. And you may notice some text on the screen. So I'd pause the video now so you can copy what's on here. These indentations were made with the tab key, which is the key to the left of on my QWERTY keyboard to the Q. Or if you've got an Azerty keyboard, it's going to be left of the A and so on and so forth. It's usually above caps lock or something. OK, so copy that on. OK, done. Good, now you've copied everything on, hopefully it's all correct. We're going to run this program and you might be able to guess what happens. So to, one simple way to run is we can just click this thing here on Visual Studio says the local Windows debugger or we can go to debug and then say start debugging. This will build the program and then run it. And then, then we've got this little thing saying hello world and then a little blinking flashing light. So this is our program, yeah? So we're going to press enter now, and it gets rid of it. We're done. So there's our first program. You're done. So now I'm going to explain every single line and why it does what it does. So C is a procedural language. Now, a procedural language is something that's made up of procedures, in a sense. So again, I need to explain what a procedure is. A procedure is kind of an instruction. It tells you you've got to do something. So if you were baking a cake, you'd first say, "Here's you need to get what the ingredients are for it first. Here's the ingredients. I'm just typing in here, so don't worry. Yeah? Type the ingredients. And whatever they may be. You may need some eggs, sugar, butter, and flour. If I can remember how to put it. Flour? Yeah? If I can remember how to spell. There's your ingredients. Okay, so now the instructions are, get a bowl. Put, sorry, these are the instructions, put um, butter in bowl, yeah, put sugar in, oops, sugar, <laughs> in bowl, yeah, it seems thing. cream, butter, and sugar together, so if all that means mix them together so they all make a paste, add eggs, mix eggs in to the batter, you can see what I'm kind of, you can, and then dot, 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 you can kind of guess, I'm making a Victoria sponge here. <laughs> but yes, it's making a cake. So each kind of statement here is kind of what your procedure is. You're saying you need to get the bowl, you need to put the sugar in the thing, put the sugar, cream the butter and sugar together, add the eggs, mix eggs together into the batter. So there you can, they're kind of the procedures you've got to do, the steps in your program. Now, within C, uh, many people will call these what these procedures, also known as functions. Now, in C, these, the difference between a function procedure is quite fuzzy. Um, even though computers, technically wise, they are two different things. But don't worry, I'll be using this word interchangeably. So it's maybe get a little bit confusing, but don't worry. Um, just think of a function or a procedure as like kind of a step in your program. I'm going to get rid of all that now and save it. So within C, C needs somewhere to start. And the way it starts is it needs an entry point procedure or an entry point function. So it says, okay, this is my program. This is where the program starts. And the way they say that is it's called the main function. And you may be able to guess this thing here is our main function. This is where we start our program from. So a function kind of has this form. It has a return type on the left. It has its name of the type, yeah. It's followed by a parenthesis and then an end parenthesis, and then it has some arguments in between. These arguments are data that you pass this function, it does stuff to that data, and then it returns a value as well. So it returns this some extra value at the end. Main is our entry point, and it says, one version of main says void in the middle of it. This means there are no input parameters. It is void of input parameters. Okay, good. We'll get on to worry about types later on, 
um, they'll be in the next few videos, so don't worry about that. So the next thing to this function you may notice, on the next line there's this opening brace. Now this curly brace or opening brace, whatever you call it, curly bracket, is saying this is where the, the contents of the function starts. And you may notice there's a closing brace saying this is the end of this function. Now this could be placed on the same line if you really wanted to, um, or it could be placed on another line, you can have many different ones there. Doesn't matter, whatever is clearer for you to read, make sure you're consistent and just do the same thing. The style I'm going to use is for the beginning of a function, it's going to be on a separate line. Okay? Now, the next step after this curly brace is our first kind of instruction. And we're telling the, the computer to print hello world to the, the screen. That's what we're saying to do. Yeah? So, printf is one of these functions that I was talking about. Now, this is part of the C runtime library, but to get all these functions, you must include another file where that is defined. So this is this is this what this line means up here. So this is include the stdio.h file, which contains numerous functions that we need, like the printf function and the getchar function, as you can see here. So printf says print hello world. Um, at the moment, you won't need to worry about any of this, but I'll talk about explaining what this, how this text works and so on and so forth. But for now, it's just some data that you pass to this function. So then functions are called with these parentheses, yeah? Kind of like in mathematics. At the end of this function, you may notice there's a semicolon. This semicolon means this is the end of the statement. So this end of the statement is kind of like a full stop in English. Like saying I made a sentence, I went to walk my dog, full stop. It was raining, full stop. These are statements, and you end them with a full stop. In C, we use semicolons. Yeah? Good. Next line's left blank, just for readability. You get rid of it, doesn't make a difference. The next line is get char. Now, this is a function which will get the next, whatever character input you've placed in, into your keyboard. So when we run this again, you may notice there's this blinking cursor. This is an old-fashioned way of interacting with the computer. Not outdated, just old-fashioned. And what it's kind of saying is, okay, waiting for some input, blah, 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 I can type in text. And all it's waiting for is until I press enter. That's all it's waiting. So that's what I've done it here for. So if we got rid of it within Visual Studio, so I'm, I'm just, don't worry, I'm just going to, actually, I'll just delete it for now. Just Don't worry now, I'll just delete it. And then I'm going to, run the program again so you can go into debug and then start debugging or press F5 and you can see it ran the program then it closed so it's to prevent it from closing and waiting for us to press enter to do anything we're going to put get char in there so get char open parentheses close parentheses semicolon yeah and it runs press enter and then the next line it says return zero now as we set up here we return a value that is an integer or an int for this function. And zero is a convention in C where we say, okay, zero, nothing's happened, nothing's gone wrong, there's no failure. If it returns anything but C, at zero, in C, the convention is saying something's gone wrong, here's the error code. So usually, if nothing's gone wrong, you write Z, zero, sorry, and then if something has gone wrong, you use another number or another error code. So there is your very first program. Please watch this over again if you don't understand anything. And please, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. Either I or someone else will ho hopefully help you. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.